Our first sighting on this trip into the dune belt was this little white beetle, the Stenocara iburnia. This white beetle is the only white beetle to be found in any desert in the world. This is the Bitis Piriguayi, the Nam of Sidewinder. The Sidewinder was continuing on the move, but it did occasionally stop, hesitate just for a few seconds, and then it would be off again. I just love that sideward movement. It was definitely on the search for shade and um, it did manage to climb up into this little tree eventually and um, that's where I finally got it resting up. It needed the breeze that it could get that was blowing off the dunes and it seemed to be far more content to just stay there fairly motionless. Oblivious to the fact that they have company is a little family of warthogs. Big boar male on the left, you can see the size of those tusks and the characteristic, very visible scrotum. female pretty face, you can see she only has two warts on the, underneath the eyes, on the sides of the face. The boar, on the other hand, has four warts, two underneath the eyes on the side and then another two lowered down just above the snout. Nice looking animal, this big male. Altogether a remarkable creature, this one of Africa's great personalities, great icons. grunts a soft warning to the others and they leave just as efficiently as they came. It was surprising to be able to step out of suburbia into this peaceful strip of nature only 20 minutes from the city centre. The sounds here also contrasted strongly to the morning traffic, the Palmeet Nature Reserve supporting much bird and insect life. Just above the water, a tiny caterpillar caught my eye. I soon realised that there were more of them in the bushes around us. They ranged in size from a few millimetres to the largest being about three centimetres. It was still quite early and the sun hadn't warmed the ground yet, so the little spiny creatures stayed still. 
and as it started to warm up, they started to move. These little eating machines are voracious feeders and are often considered as pests. But here, with all the abundance of vegetation, they can eat and eat, eventually taking flight as butterflies or moths. Because caterpillars are rich in protein, they have many predators. So their appearance is important to repel danger. Bright colors and cryptic patterns make them appear threatening and potentially poisonous. Caterpillar's vision is not very good. So they move their head from side to side to judge distance and feel the way along the plants. It is really important to have places like this to relax and listen. And even in your garden or fields nearby, if you take the time out to look, a whole world of creatures that you have never seen opens up before you. A nice group of common bottlenose dolphins made an appearance. They were moving quite quickly, so we didn't have much time. I quickly grabbed my freediving gear, jumped in and just managed to get one dive down and had a really nice sighting of these animals. Once we had got our scuba diving gear on, we dropped down onto the northern side of Stringer and it was just an amazing sight. It was like diving into an aquarium. Nice big schools of Russell snappers and blue banded snappers. Out the corner of my eye I caught a glimpse of quite a commotion going on and I swam across and what I witnessed was there are a couple of Sergeant Major damselfish and they had made their nests and laid their eggs in amongst these rocks. They were obviously trying to defend their nests against a lot of other reef fish that were determined on getting the eggs. This is the black cheek moray and when I had a good close look at him he was also being cleaned by a strange looking shrimp, one that I hadn't seen before and I later found out that it was a blood shrimp. It was really an amazing, amazing little dive that we just had on, on Stringer. <laughs> 